Hey everybody, welcome. I am Daniel G. Garza, and this is another episode of Putting Together Conversations. Welcome to the show. I am super excited. I know I say that all the time because I'm excited. I'm always excited about my guests because I really want to talk to them. But this episode, I am like super, like this is like giant taco excited. Uh, today is uh, January 23rd. 2021, and this is my 300th episode. Yeah, I know you're clapping as you're watching this. I, uh, uh, I'm not gonna cry. You're gonna cry. But uh, there was only one person that I could think of. Uh, well, there were two people, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, that I would want to have on this special episode, and I purposely coordinated to make sure that that we could do it. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm gonna go ahead and bring him in. Uh, he is, uh, you hear me talking about him all the time because I mention him every episode. Uh, I think sometimes I forget to mention Christian, but I always mention you. And That's you hear true. Me say, you hear me say it all the time. <laughs> I want to thank my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers. Thank you, sir. Um, welcome to the show. 300. 300. We did it. We did it. Yes. It's, um, and it's been, uh, this month was... 11 years from your first episode. So that's that's pretty good for one a week and and, and with breaks in between and stuff like that, uh, to get to 300 is pretty amazing. And uh, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we got here, how, mm -hmm. how I was not discovered because I kind of weaseled my way into <laughs> it. Um, but um, first of all, I. I we, we did have a bio ready, but I, I want you to tell the folks how Abnormal Entertainment came to be and, uh, and, and who you are. Because let me tell you folks, although Mr. Moyers has been on my show several times, this is the first time we're doing a live stream video version. Yeah. It's always been video. So I'm, I'm yeah. really excited. And uh, my daughter, Casey, decided it would be a good idea to have the Funko Pops behind me. On the shelf I built with my own two little hands. <laughs> Just for me? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yes, damn it. Um. Um, boy, how did Abnormal start? Um, Abnormal Entertainment is a name that David Hayes came up with uh, when he was in college and shot his first short film. Um, that was... Uh, that was in the 90s, so <laughs> it's a long time ago. But we, uh, he was shooting some movies under that. We shot some together. Uh, I was writing comic books. There was all, all kinds of things we were doing and decided to kind of come together with it. And then podcasting was originally my idea. We were shooting some uh, video interviews with certain people, uh, Jeff Dolniak, another partner in it. Um, he was finding things for a movie site that we had started, Cinema Head Cheese, and we were interviewing different guests. A friend of ours was um, booking for different shows, and uh, I decided to take the audio and turn them into podcasts. And I had already, on my own, been doing Kevin Hates Everything. I did that for a year, and I had stopped that. Um, but then once we started doing the Cinema Head Cheese thing once a month, putting the audio of our interviews up, uh, Cam Harston and I were talking about it because we're both podcast fans. Uh, we talked about doing a show together and Dave Hayes moved back to Michigan to uh, help raise his niece. And we started doing a show together kind of, you know, as a weekly keep in touch sort of thing. And uh, then we just started adding more and more quickly. We had, uh, Dave and Tony Sabal, who are uh, huge comic book fans, friends of ours, uh, they started a comic book show. And as we added things on, uh, we had one show that brought you on. And uh, that show didn't last very long. But of all the shows we started with, here you are as the last man standing, basically. <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, none of the shows from that era are still around. The The longest running from that time next to you was Raise Your Spirits, which Cam and I did. 
And I think I ended that one in the 240s I, somewhere, something like that. And that was after doing it, I think I did 60 or 70 by myself after wow. he passed. So, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about all the guys that were part of Abnormal Entertainment there. Yeah. Because we did a lot of uh, cross-dressing. I mean, cross uh, <laughs> crossovers uh, on the show. Uh, yeah. Two of my favorite guys were the, the BS guys. Yeah. They were freaking hilarious. Plus, we took a road trip with them, and uh, that's a oh, trip. Oh, yeah. That yeah. That was yeah, my first. Uh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you guys came out here to do uh, the first Phoenix Comic Con that we, we did panels at. Uh, which is where the T-shirt came from. So on yeah. the first trip, for those of you that <laughs> see the logo now, if you see the logo on, on the top of the screen, uh, which actually would be up here. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I forget what it is. <laughs> so you, uh, That's the new one. That's the old one. <laughs> so it's gone through four major changes over the last uh, nine years because it started in 2012. Yeah. Oh, wait. Is it? Yeah, yeah. 2012, January 2012. Okay. I did the math yeah. wrong. <laughs> so, this coming yeah. Monday, January 25th, uh, I, I will be on the air for, for nine years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and if you go in the archives, uh, there are two other shows that I did. I did Corazón en la Mano, which was the Spanish version of the show, which lasted probably about 30-some episodes, somewhere around there. Mm. Uh, I feel like a little more than that, actually, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. Yeah. And then we did the uh, HIV special show that mm -hmm. aired. Uh, also had about the same amount of episodes. Uh, and those are in archives, and, and you guys can check those out. Uh, some of the topics on HIV are still relevant. And some oh, yeah. of the Spanish shows were not time sensitive. So go back and go check this out if you get a chance. And we'll post, as usual, we'll post all the links and uh, uh, information so you guys can go out. And then for Evan George, yes, definitely reach out. And if you want to be on the show, I'd love to have you on the show. Uh, get in touch with me. <laughs> And uh, Rick uh, Caratas uh, has already been on the show. So if you guys uh, are following the thread on Facebook, uh, Rick is on, on the show already, and you can go back and find his uh, – look for his picture. You can find that. Yeah. Um, so if, if you're wondering, if you're like, well, how did you find this little Mexican, and where was he selling oranges? <laughs> what freeway was he on? Well, uh, we have to go back to 20, 2000 and. This is 2011, yeah. So um, Greg, uh, Matt Grenier, who had a show on the network, mm -hmm. uh, him and I met on the set of a commercial, and he mentioned to me that he had a podcast. I'm like, well, what is it? I'll, I'll go listen. So then he was doing, I don't remember exactly what kind of shows his were. It was... From what I remember, a lot of uh, talking about life, top of mind kind of stuff. He didn't have a specific theme, so to speak. Like Cam and I, back then, we tried picking a topic every week. And then as time went on, we changed it into different segments and things like that. But he kind of rambled for an hour, more or less, you know, uh, which was fine. I mean, you know, we were new and adding different content and I think he won about 24 or five episodes before uh, that fell apart. But um, you know, it, it was, it was what it was and it was its own thing. So he invited me to his show for a uh, uh, end of the year holiday special and talk yeah. about, I was just starting to really tap into like my spirituality and getting connected. Um, and so I came on the show and talked about uh, how I, because I was, uh, now I'm 13 years sober, so I was very early in my sobriety. And, and mm -hmm. so I kind of talked about that. And then I came in at the end of the year for a second episode because I always believed in setting New Year's goals, not New Year's resolutions. So we talked about that. And jokingly, and I still remember that conversation, uh, I jokingly I said, ha, 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 so you should tell your producers to give me a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so he did. He did. He <laughs> did. Um, <laughs> I don't know that part of the conversation, but was there a conversation? 
Um, it wasn't anything too intensive. He just, he probably would have sent a Facebook message at that point with the three of us. And uh, I, I know we already had a thread going and suggested you having a show. And I said, yeah, I liked him. You know, I think it's a good idea. It's something different than what we had already. I mean, we had the comic books, uh, movies, and, you know, comedy stuff. And Cam was like, well, I don't know if it fits. I'm not sure if it would work and all this stuff. And I said, well, let's let him do one and listen and see how it works. And then, of course, uh, it worked out. And he was like, yeah, you know what? It was good, the first episode. And then you had recorded what you thought was just like a test pilot. And mm -hmm. I put it up <laughs> as episode one. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. go. I said, uh, go, do, do what you want to do. And you don't have rules, just do your show. And you're like, okay. <laughs> that first episode. So Matt calls me and says, hey, do a pilot. See what happens. And I think we had a phone call. I think we did a phone call with you guys. Maybe. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think so. I think so. Some kind of conversation with the four of us. All that was going on, and um, I do remember. And for those of you, uh, Mr. Cam Harson, who is no longer with us, uh, he didn't like me. He didn't. He thought I was too nice for the for the uh, <laughs> because I was all about spirituality and connecting yeah. and, and clean and sober, and um, yeah. and he, <laughs> that was not us. <laughs> yes. Everybody drank at that time. Every show had alcohol in it. Our show logo was, I designed it off of the Tagare label. <laughs> <laughs> Even on the way to Phoenix that first time, uh, let's just say, I think I ended up driving the last part there. <laughs> and I think I ended up driving the last part here because they were not suitable for being behind a wheel. But uh, yeah. <laughs> The person always had like this little reservation because apparently I was too sweet and nice. So they, I, I get to do my first show, which was to me a pilot episode. Like, but I, I and I, I remember, I don't know if I ever told you this, I, I, I started recording and then I, I didn't know what to do. So I, I, I paused and like I went for a walk and then I came back and like started again and then paused because I was like, this is sounding so stupid, but like it's just, it's just a, a pilot. <laughs> Uh, but I was pretty open in my first episode. Uh, we're gonna yeah. replay. I was gonna show. I was gonna show a clip, but I didn't have time to make it. So yeah, whatever. And so I'm. But we I, we have the file, so I'm going to download it and put it up here as a as a as a little video, so you guys can check it out on YouTube. But um, I talked about drugs and alcohol and sex yeah. and like all the nasty things that I was trying to put together. <laughs> And that's what won Mr. Harson over, the fact that I was so nasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so That's it. <laughs> uh, and then the rest, well, it's history. And then, of course, I, I, I wasn't working at the time. I was, I was in disability. So I wanted to do a Spanish show because I'm always trying to push Spanish wherever I can. Yeah. And that lasted for a while. But, and then so I was doing the shows on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with a different guest on every episode. Yeah. Uh, that was like, yes, if you people are watching, I'm crazy, yes. I, I'm an overachiever and I wanted to be the best. Um, <laughs> I did I did make it to, uh, what was it, SoundCloud? I, I was on their list as moving uh, up. Stitcher. Stitcher. It was Stitcher, and then, yeah. In the early days of that app, yeah. You were and, like, a top 100 for a little while. And then I did make the top list of iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you watching, yes, that's why I stick around. I want my position back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all, it was funny because there was a stretch where uh, we were all popping up on like recommended shows on iTunes without doing anything. And it was pretty great. And, uh, but you got in, they had different categories on, on Stitcher and in their early days too, um, where you were in the top uh, 100, and I can't remember which category it was now, but I used to take screenshots and send them to you guys all the time. So look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> and 
So that was fun. I know I have a file somewhere in my Dropbox with all those screenshots still. So I have to see if I can find them. I think I do anyway. I doubt I purged them, but it was kind of fun. So um, for everybody watching this, we're 15 minutes in. I am your host, Daniel G. Garza, and this is Put Together Conversations, 300th episode. And my very special guest today is uh, a producer, Mr. Kevin Morris. You hear me talk about him all the time because I, I mention him in just about every episode. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, I mean, it sounds very conceited, to, like, <laughs> but screw it. It's my show, right? Mm -hmm. And it is 300. So let's talk about me, my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're pretty. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, is there an episode that I did that stuck out the most to you? Oh, boy. Um, it's funny because my memory gets worse as I get older, especially as, like, working at the post office for almost 14 years, I would listen to uh, podcasts all day by yourself and uh i had so many i had to start listening to them in almost double speed <laughs> just to get through them all but um there were there were things that i didn't realize stuck with me and i, I won't remember a lot of names um but when you've had people on like you've had people on for a second time on video and i'll go oh i know that name or you send me the picture for the thing. And I go, I've seen that picture before. Has, have they been on before? And I look back and go, oh, yeah, I remember them, you know. So, uh, but there are a lot of little bits and pieces that stick with me uh, that people say. And, I mean, to recall them now, I, I couldn't. But I'll, I'll find myself uh, remembering different things. Or, or when somebody comes on a second time, oh, I remember when they said this. Um, then you had a guest, and I will, uh, Dr. C., was that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the first time I watched the video because I'm usually just pulling the audio off of it through a program. And, uh, you know, I got to see how this all went with the video side because I don't have anything to do with that. And she said a lot of interesting stuff. And I was very uh, just focused on her episode because she said a lot of things that uh, were interesting to me, just talking about her career and stuff. And immediately I heard a fellow Chicago and I'm like, Oh my God, it's so heavy. <laughs> the accent. I think I texted you that, <laughs> which is funny to me. You know, it's like listening to my sister or something, but, uh, but she had a great episode. If I can go recent, I mean, but there are so many throughout time. Um, and even going back to like one that we did together, we did a two parter, a hundred and hundred one that was you, me and Cam. And I still haven't I haven't re-listened to it yet, but I'm I'm going to soon, uh, just to to hear it again because those old episodes crack me up. When we're all, you know, just going off together, and that's a lot of fun. The funny thing about the episodes, because uh, like I said, we we crossed shows sometimes, is yeah. that on my show is always like so nice. Let's talk about your life. What what? How do you put it together? <laughs> How do you make it work? How's life? And then I would go on other people's joke, shows and I'd be like, fuck this, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people would sometimes be like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's, it's them. It's the influence. It's your true uh, self. <laughs> how dare you? Um, <laughs> the real you comes out. <laughs> it, it, it does. But Mr. Harston had a way of, put, of like pulling that out. Like he managed to like, Get get the dirty out of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about about you though. Like over the over the last 10, 11 years that you've been producing podcasts and and dealing mm -hmm. with them. Like, is there something like there's something about you that you've learned listening to all these shows? Um. Mm. Probably <laughs> just it, it, I've learned to pay attention to other people's stories 
and see how things affect them. Um, I've had some of my own major experiences over the past few years uh, that have shown me uh, things that other people have been through as well. And <laughs> I asked my daughter once, uh, when I was in high school or when I was younger, do you think I was the bully or was I bullied? And she's like, you're the bully. And I just kind of laughed. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the whole, the whole idea, and it's something as a society we're grappling with now, uh, the whole, it's just a joke idea. That's fine when you're with your friends and it's somebody that knows you and understands where you're coming from and somebody that you know, and you know what, you know, levers you can pull and, and mess around. And, but when you're with strangers and you try to do that whole thing, you can be hurtful. You can be cruel. And even without intent, you can say things that are racist, sexist, homophobic, it just mean spirited in general. And, uh, it's something I've definitely learned listening to all these things. A lot of the guests you've had, um, just listening to all, all you guys being on your own shows. And uh, it's something I've myself become far more conscious of and uh, with different movements, you know, whether it's Me Too or uh, Black Lives Matter or, you know, even just anti-bullying and stuff like that. It, if you sit and listen and pay attention and learn to why this stuff harms people, even little things, you know, call it microaggressions or, or whatever. Uh, you really have to think about your own actions and behaviors and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, you're, you're going to think, Oh, what did I do? You know, even listening to old shows that Cam and I did, I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> I can't like, I put that stuff and I'm just being fully honest. I put those behind a password for right now because you know and I thought about putting a disclaimer like yeah you know what sorry <laughs> but I don't want somebody to stumble on it and then feel hurt by it and we cause that you know what I mean even though we had no intent and we're just mostly talking to each other with this stuff but then there's an outside audience that might not know us or understand us the way we understood each other and uh, you know it's it's something that I'm not going to deny that's there, but you have to move past it and grow from it and, and be that. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing that's come from a lot of this stuff and, and being able to do that. But I think that's uh, like, I, 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 you, I, it's not, it's not difficult to not pay attention to it, but we, we see a lot of, celebrities, artists, sports, uh, where they go back and dig up old Twitter or yeah. posts from like 10 years ago. But you're right. Like I like I was listening to our my first episode, which was really just me talking, but like the yeah. first step that I have and the way that I would talk to them or interview them, which mm -hmm. really back then it was really about interviewing them. It's morphed into more of a conversation show than interviewing them. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, although I, I'm not, my shows are not about causing controversy. But right. I, I do remember saying sometimes stuff that I was like, "Ooh, like why did you ask that?" Or that was a stupid follow up question. But yeah, but we're we're. I mean, for everybody watching, we're meant to grow or, or listening. We're, we're meant to grow. You're supposed to start somewhere stupid when you're like young or younger and then over time grow it and evolve and get wiser, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's like, um, I've thought about the cancel culture stuff a lot because, uh, and, and you take a couple examples like Gina Carano or um, J.K. Rowling and stuff they say now and people trying to cancel them like, okay, well they're doing that actively right now, but then you go back five, 10 years and you find stuff that people said, and it's like, let them talk about it. If you want to bring it up, fine. And you know, however they handle it, they handle it. 
but what are they doing now? Are they different now? You know, and uh, that's what we need to look at. Just, you know, shooting somebody off in a rocket <laughs> into the sun because they said something 10 years ago. That's tough, you know, but if they're still that same person, go for it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But if they're not, if they've grown from it, I mean, y- you got to give people a chance. You yeah. know what I mean? Because, uh, yeah, because they've been thinking about some other shows and uh, some of the guys that were hosting uh, are parents now and, and they're married and they have a family. And I yeah. know that if, if we took who they were nine years ago when I started, they're not near who they are now, but that's the intent. We, we're supposed to grow and mature. Well, hopefully yeah. mature. Uh, I can't bother yeah. myself. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of a wall of toys. <laughs> okay. Just, okay. Um, but maturity comes in you know, little bits and pieces. <laughs> but I, I think that's the, the I, I think as, 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 social content people or media content people or, or content creators. Um, I think we're so fortunate in that our lives are being recorded because there is yeah. you're, the way you thought about a certain thing at a certain time is, is on file. And then you can come back to it like me nine years later and go, Oh, wow. Like, like I, I just, yeah. Uh, my, yeah. my views on sexuality and my views on uh, discrimination, like a lot of that stuff, like even, I've become a citizen since then. And, and my view on on politics has changed because my I changed. So there's a lot of things for anybody who's listening or watching this, just know that you're supposed to evolve and, and the, don't, stop being embarrassed about the things you posted 10 years ago. You yeah. were young. And, and you didn't have the, the knowledge or wisdom that you do now, so enjoy it. Um, do, do you think your, your kid makes you rethink what you say out loud? Yeah, to a degree. <laughs> 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 to a degree. Um, you know, th- sometimes uh, there are things when I'm like, all right, <laughs> this was bad, you know, <laughs> or don't do that. And I'll, you know, catch my own behavior and explain why I screwed up, you know, things like that. So, uh, it, it, it's, it's part of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it, and it does change things, you know, like there are people that won't, uh, say do a nude scene in a movie because their kids might see it or something. Whereas, you know, years before they, they might've done it. And then, They'll regret it later or whatever it is, you know, things like that. So especially public things. Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely part of it. <laughs> uh, for everybody watching, we're almost halfway through the show. Uh, my name is Daniel G. Garza, and this is Put Together Conversations. My guest today is uh, my producer, Mr. Kevin Moyers, and we're celebrating 300 episodes. Uh, I'm so excited that he came on uh to talk about this. Um, we're just kind of, we're not showing any clips, so don't get excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're just looking back on what, like, all, like, all that we've changed and matured and grown up in the last 300 episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, my show, my first show aired on uh, January 25th, 2012. And uh, mm-hmm. over the years, we, we've seen We've lost some people. People have been married. People, children have been born. Uh, we've been. We've seen a lot of changes. Uh, not only that, but things around us, politics, uh, yeah, religious stances, uh, what's what's out there. Uh, even the world of podcasting has changed quite a bit. Oh God, world. yeah. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, when we started this. You had a handful of celebrities really doing it. Um, I mean, podcasting kind of started with, uh, oh, what was the, he was an MTV VJ. Uh, I want to say it was Adam something. I kind of remember him, but I think he was, by the time I was really watching MTV, he was uh, off doing radio and stuff. Um, but he was, he was kind of the, 
one of the earliest of it. I think he coined the phrase pod or the term podcasting. Uh, a lot of people credit him for that, but I mean, you had like Kevin Smith, uh, Adam Carolla, Mark Marin, um, and but that was about it, you know. And uh, I mean, Carolla was a radio guy, really, more than anything. So you know, that it seemed like natural. But now you got people like Conan O'Brien and. Rob Lowe and, you know, uh, every stand-up comedian has a podcast, <laughs> basically. But the celebrities getting into it really changed a lot. Uh, it changed the landscape for independence. Because there were some big independent shows that, you know, I, I don't know where they sit in it now compared to the others, but um, it, it's kind of tough for a startup to – to get anywhere right now, uh, unless you're attached to, you know, it could be like Earwolf or, or uh, some of those other bigger networks, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about Adam Curry. Adam Curry was one of the first. Adam Curry, guys. yes. Thank you. So if you don't remember who that is, he was big on MTV, so go check him out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then over the years, I, I would hear more people like, oh, so-and-so has a show. So -so. Like, I've had a show. Like, I've had a show for a long time. What, what, yes. I <laughs> um, was it like two years ago, maybe, where uh, Conan O'Brien was on a, a magazine cover? I can't remember which. It was Maybe it was Wired or Entertainment Weekly or something. It's like, what, and it, they made it seem like he invented podcasting. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I've come and gone in podcasting before he show up. I was like, I had three shows at one time. Three shows. Yeah. shows. <laughs> you don't know me. That's the problem. You don't know me. Uh, but yeah, and then oh, when, oh. when the launch came up, uh, we had March of 2020, March 2020, when the lockdown kicked in, it seemed like all of a sudden people were home and yeah. everybody, the grandmother, wanted to do a podcast and have a podcast. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. I'm not being mean. <laughs> not. Uh, but <laughs> not everybody knows how to use a microphone or how to be on, on, yeah. in front of an audience. So, uh, what, again, we're not being mean. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but what, what is your thoughts on, on everybody having a microphone in front of them? I mean, there's good and bad to it. And we've seen, especially in the last four years, how bad it is to just let anybody say publicly whatever they want uh, all the time. <laughs> so, and it goes to an international level. I, I mean, when you have a, a boom in white supremacy <laughs> and a lot of those leaders are coming from Canada, you know, it's like, okay, and that, that's affecting us because they're doing a lot of it down here. And so it just, it's crossed worlds, you know, and you get crazy leaders that you see around the world, like say Silvio Berlusconi in Italy, who is what I thought kind of Trump was going to be like. I mean, he was this crazy party boy. He had, you know, <laughs> girlfriends everywhere and stuff like that. And he wasn't a good leader. And I figured, well, that's what we have in store for four years. I had no idea what we had coming. But, uh, you know, a lot of that comes from having that voice. And I mean, you know, look how quiet things got when Twitter took that seriously, finally, and started getting rid of some of that stuff. So uh, it's interesting. It's, it, it, but it's not always a great thing. Not everybody <laughs> needs to have that voice. I mean, we, we should in, in obviously voting ways and stuff like that, but uh, we don't need to hear everyone's thoughts all the time. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, a big hello. I have a couple of people that just joined the conversation. Karen Gomez, a really good friend of mine. Thank you, sweetie, for, for coming on and watching. And Tony Gala, who um, I've been on his show, and he's come on my show, and uh, really great person. Um, we need to talk, Tony. We have a conversation pending. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I found that... Uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna put my pet peeve out there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it because otherwise it's gonna be burning yeah. a hole in my. But my pet peeve is people who have podcasts, and <laughs> and then 
they just kind of sit there and not really say much or or they yeah they bring in guests but their guests never get to talk yeah and um and then my third pet peeve is when people ask when the host asks a question but then they answer for their guests because they know them and you're right, like, right. Well, I, I hear you and uh because i try not to do that folks so i try not to do that um, <laughs> that's so, why i could never have guests <laughs> <laughs> so entertaining i mean you uh again <laughs> god bless mr harson he was he was he was a uh, he was a wonderful person i loved yeah. him dearly but when it came to conversations he was a mess because he had no <laughs> free filter and that's what made him so endearing so uh i, I, I love that man I love that well man. he had no filter i'm the king of add <laughs> conversation here and, and when he and i were doing the show together i i did not have the adderall that i have prescribed to me today <laughs> and even now it's hard so <laughs> so yeah it was all over the place but we had fun so I, i'm gonna this is, again this is gonna sound like a very conceited question and i it's, it's one that I, I can only ask my producer this is what because um, people obviously listen, people obviously listen to my show, and yeah, uh, what do you think has been the consistency of of the audience? Um, what, think, what makes my show different or unique or special? <laughs> I, I, I think, <laughs> uh, honestly, I always like podcasts that. I, I like to listen to those that uh, let people be themselves and you do that. You're yourself in the show. Um, you're not lying to the audience. Uh, you try to get the, the, the guests to be themselves. So that's good. And I think when you listen to something like that, that's a big thing with podcasting is you feel like you're part of that conversation or you're, sitting together and you're just listening in while the other people at the table talk. Um, and that's even, it, you know, crossed into other realms. Um, I'm reading a book right now that has that feel to it. And it's kind of interesting to see it in print, but that's what a lot of podcasts are like. And the fact that you have that and, but you're still getting to know the story and you're still, um, you know, letting them give their whole saga of why they've gotten to where they've gotten, and, and you're still able to laugh with them and joke around and stuff like that. Uh, that's good, you know, and I, I think that makes people comfortable listening as well. So that's good. I think that 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 keeps people. Yeah, I, the one thing that, and, and for those of you, it did not start off that way. I, with my original. <laughs> version of my show with interviews was I was going to be that Barbara Walters, yeah. uh, Oprah, uh, uh, <laughs> George Stephanopoulos, which George Stephanopoulos, if you're watching this, I want you on my show. I think he's fucking amazing. But Yeah, not uh, Oprah, though. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> she, she gets enough. Yeah, you have enough attention. Bring, bring me on your channel. Let's, let's do that, Oprah. I dare you. Um, yeah. But but it, it was supposed to be that, like, if you were a tree, and why did you do this? And, if, and then um, I don't know that I've ever, like, publicly thanked you for this. But then uh, it, it morphed a little bit those first couple of years. And from 2012 to 2014, 15, yeah. it, it went through some changes. I started modern, I started to listen to myself, not listening to my guests, and be like, hmm, like, you're not really paying attention you have a question before they even answer, and it's, it's stupid. Because then the follow-up questions yeah. were so out of place, and I, I was so stuck to it. But then for those of you that have been following the show for a while, uh, know that, uh, yes, Tony, I am the Devo. Remember that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Um, but then in 2015, for those of you that uh, have followed my story and have been fans of the show for a while, uh, I was diagnosed with cancer on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th of 2015. And I decided to take a little break during my cancer time. Uh, I didn't want my shows to revolve around the cancer. And I didn't want to 
I didn't want to be, I didn't want that to be the focus of my conversations every time. And I had the feeling that it would, it would come up. Uh, yeah. Only an so, asshole would focus on their butt cancer. Uh, <laughs> I got it in before you did. I got the ass joke in before you did. That was my goal today. <laughs> okay, so we're going to leave that behind me now. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, so I started doing video blogs, and I decided to do like five, ten-minute videos, uh, which you can find on this on this YouTube page. If you're watching on YouTube, mm -hmm. you can go and go back to the main page, and you'll find the whole series of – it's about 30 videos about me going through cancer – and then 30 videos yeah. of me going through the ostomy. And I didn't want to do a podcast during those times. I think I did a random episode here and there, only because I really wanted a guest. Maybe, yeah. Um, but you were you were smart enough. Uh, of course, that's your producer, but your job. <laughs> but you were smart enough to include those in my lineup and include the videos and show people what I was going through. Um, and I, I never... I never had a chance to really thank you for that because that that kept me in the in the minds of people. Um, yeah. And there is one particular I don't remember what number of video it is, but there is one video where I'm just not feeling that that day, and I'm just I, I was just <laughs> not, and I'm crying, and I've recorded it here in Laguna Beach, but I'm crying, and if you go see the video, there's snot, and it's a, it's ugly movie crying. Yep. Um, but I never got to ask you like what, what, I mean, of course, what, what motivated you, or what ran through your thoughts to say, Hey, let's put these up. Um, I think part of it is you were making them public. So I said, okay. And they were short. They were only a couple minutes each. So, uh, I would try to take, and I know I didn't do it with all of them. Um, but I think it was before you made the conscious decision to take a real break. So uh, I remember telling you that I could pull the audio, run them together. And I know I made like a little, a little sound from your theme song at the time. Um, and then, uh, so, so that would drop in between each one and I'd have audio up and that like, that's your episode for this week. This is it. So it, it kind of comforted you in a way that you're like, okay, I'm not, skipping out because you were stressing about that. Like, I don't have an episode. I, you know, I was like, this, you got, you're putting content out. I'll pull that. And there you go. And I think it did calm you down on that a bit. So it was helping you. It was putting that out and somebody was listening and it was helping them. Uh, somebody listened that, you know, was going through it probably at the time. So I, I figured doing all that together, it, it it did help you get through like, okay, I do have something up there. And to a point where you weren't even asking me anywhere, I was just grabbing a few, making an episode out of it. And there it was. So, and you didn't even, you stopped worrying about it, which was good. That was kind of the, the beginning goal for me to get you to like, you got something else to focus on. I'll do this. Don't worry about it. So. Um. <laughs> Uh, as as strong as I made it appear to other people, uh, those videos were some of the most honest moments. And and and, and Kevin is right. Like I I I hope that when you guys watch the show or listen to the show, uh, that you know that I'm not trying to put up a front. I'm 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 not trying to sell you something I'm not, and it comes from the heart. And all my almost all of my guests. Um, and I, I, jo I say jokingly, but it's really it's true. My guests are mostly people that I, I know already and I, I want to talk to them and share their story or people yeah. that I've, I found on, a, on another show or saw them on TV and I was like, I want them on my show and I, I will stop them. I will, yeah. I, will, I will follow them everywhere and send them messages everywhere until they say yes. Um, and then by then... <laughs> I can, I've, con I've convinced them that we're great friends and they need to come on my show. Uh, there's There are only a couple of people, and probably a handful of people that have been referred over to me and say, hey, you need to have this person on your show. Uh, but when uh, when I was diagnosed with cancer, uh, I, I knew I needed to take a break. Uh, I knew my mm. body was going to be asking for it. Uh, and I was. I'm, I, I, I'm not 
blowing myself up. I am a workaholic. I, I, yeah. I, I own it. I, I'm always thriving to do more. I always want to do the most. And I'm always in competition with everybody. Like, y'all don't know this. And I say this all the time. You don't know I'm in competition with you, but it's, it's sibling rivalry. Like, I'm always watching, like, what are people doing? What are people going on? What is happening? And I try to better. So when, when that happened, and uh, I remember you posting it, I was like, and I remember being a little bit like, what the fuck, man? These are my videos. <laughs> and, but then also thinking business, because I'm always, for anybody, yes, my brain is always yeah. on business. How do I make things better? Uh, I was like, wow, he's keeping me relevant. He's making sure that my, my audience doesn't forget me. Um, yeah, and, and I knew that too. You, you were... Uh, were you? I mean, at one point you were doing three shows at once, and look at now you're doing the same, you know, a bunch of shows at, at the same time, <laughs> plus multiple episodes of this, you know. Uh, so, and and I think at one point I was doing maybe four at a time, and Cam was doing two or three, to, you know, at a time, and plus he and I were editing everything, so we understood your mindset on that without a problem. Uh, we both did uh, from the beginning. So, you know, it was nothing new to me that you needed to have something, have that content, whatever, and feel like you accomplished something that week. So that was like, oh, I get this, you know, <laughs> I'm like, here we go. And I'm thinking of what what I can do as always. So, you know. I, I just want you to know that uh, I uh... – I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it meant a lot. Uh, I well, would not. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. You would not. Go ahead. I, I, was... I, was, I, I would not. We wouldn't be right here. Yeah. I, I probably would have given up and, and not continued. So uh, with, with, because you, and I, 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 you know, I say it from the heart every time I say, thank you, sir. Uh, if, it, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing 300 right now. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, happy I could do it. And, you know, it's you always do words of wisdom. I'm just going to throw them in right here because it fits the, the tone. Um, the, you know, you always say to somebody, if there's anything I can do to help, so, you know, let me know. And I, I think you might be the first person I've heard say it. Like, don't ask me. I'm, I'm dealing with this. I, I can't think about it right now. You know, and uh, uh we we lost another friend last year uh who would be known in this network podcasting wise mrs blogster um leah veeker who dalen veeker was the man is is was the mass blogster <laughs> he, he stopped his show a while ago and and he and i have been working on bunny 17 media for the last uh three and a half years but uh she was the same way like don't ask me i you know I, i'm dealing with this stuff right now so i learn to if it's somebody you know you know what they need in general day-to-day -day life stuff so figure out something that can help and just do it you know with whether it's here i'll bring you dinner i mean it could be that simple you know uh you're having a hard time let me come take care of your laundry let me walk the dog for you let me whatever it could be little things to help just do it and you know, they'll come back later because you, you can't put it on the person who's dealing with the stuff as much as you feel helpless too. I mean, there's no doubt when somebody you care about is going through that, um, but just figure something out and get it done because they're dealing with a hell of a lot more than you can imagine. So yeah. that's, that's my words of wisdom for today. <laughs> we haven't yet had the banner for words of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> And right at the right time, I feel like you've been listening to my show. You know exactly when it was mm. supposed to be out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of, uh, for people that, that know me, one of my pet peeves is how are you feeling? I hate that question. I, there are a few things in my life that I hate, and I hate people asking me, how do you feel? Like, I don't worry about how I feel. Like, it's, what's what I'm doing? Like, how, yeah. how, <laughs> how, how, how are you doing things? How, what do you need? Like what can like what can I do like that that how especially when I was going through cancer I know I'm rambling now but it gets me all worked up but 
especially when I was going through cancer, we were like, how do you feel? I'm like, I have cancer in my butt. How do you die? <laughs> like, oh, my ass. And I didn't put it there. So how yeah. do you think I feel? Uh, but you do what I did and tell you you're acting like a bitch. And then I laugh. <laughs> I just know the face you're making when I say it. <laughs> you be quiet in the text for a minute, and you're like, you know what? <laughs> and then that's when I lose it, because I know, I know you know where where it was coming from. <laughs> just trying to make you laugh. You don't know me, um, <laughs> but uh, not changing subjects radically. But uh, in the last nine years, what are you up to now? Um, as a, being a podcaster is behind me for the time being, uh, it's, it's something I think about from time to time, but you know, I did so many hundreds of hours of it. It was like, ah, I'm tired of talking, <laughs> but then I found a different angle, which is writing, which I've always loved. So, uh, and I know we've talked about it here since, um, uh, in the audio, but, uh, 2017, is when we started Bunny 17 Media. I had gotten a, a graphic novel back into my possession. I mean, rights-wise, it, it was done with a publisher I, I was with, and it hadn't been going anywhere really there. And uh, so a friend said, uh, Dom Reggio, uh, he has his own company, Mess Bucket Comics, and he, uh, he was out here for Comic-Con and said, why don't you just do it yourself? which I had done previously and it was a nightmare, but that was like 13 years prior. So things have changed now. There's front on demand, there's different avenues that are better for independence. So I said, okay. And uh, I asked Casey, my daughter, uh, what would you name a company? You know, and we came up with a name and a logo in like minutes, not even kidding. Uh, as soon as she said Bunny 17, I got the, the image of the logo with the rabbit ears, making the number 17. And uh, we, Casey drew up a little uh, quick version of it. We sent it to my sister, who, as a graphic uh, artist, she, I mean, she's done like the, Sousa, the new Sousa Tequila label and stuff like that. She's worked on some big things. And she put it to get, uh, together for us, not to name drop the show. <laughs> Everybody has one of the show. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, Dale and Beaker, like I said. Um, he, he drew a comic book that uh, I, I wrote and he did another book um, the first one was Blast of the Clown that I wrote it was a big kind of in joke between us and Dave Hayes and, and uh, Jeff Dolnak and uh, then he did one uh, called Twisted Magic and we got a few other things I put old things that I'd written together uh, into books and Casey and I wrote a book together uh, Search for the Book of the Guardians is the first in a four-part series. The fourth one's coming out soon. And uh, we had enough for a table at Tucson Comic Con. Did all of that. It went well. And we just kept going from that point. So uh, last summer, when I was getting an LLC set up, originally I just put it under my name in case it went to hell and then I don't have me to worry about but when I got the LLC set up, uh, Dalen and his daughter Izzy have been with us doing things, creating things, you know, from the beginning, uh, running a table over here while we're, Casey and I are, are over here, you know, stuff like that. And I just looked over at Casey and I said, uh, I think we need to put Dalen and Izzy on the, on the business as partners. And she just goes, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't even like a thing. And I, I texted Dale and I'm like, Hey, uh, doing the LLC. I want to put you guys on it as equals, you know, equal partners. And he was like, cool. And so, uh, that's been official since last summer and we've been pushing hard with a lot of content, uh, working on a lot of stuff. I left, uh, the post office a month ago today and I've been just doing this full time since then. So, uh, and it's been, great honestly to finally get to live it out and um you know it's it's something that uh, i hope i can do for the rest of my life so and uh, 
for those of you, I the link to find all his stuff is right there right now. So go check it out. Uh, hopefully, if I can finish my book soon, yeah, we'll we'll be putting that under the Funny Seventeen Media logo. So uh, keep it keep it on house in the family. Uh, plus, he has my green card, and if I go anywhere, he will pull eyes on me. So, <laughs> there is that. Uh, I remember that, that was a joke I used to say. I'm not anymore. I'm a citizen. People. Yeah, not now. <laughs> I used to say that quite often about Mr. Harsley. It's like, yeah, he, he owns me. He has me. Uh, we're, we're almost at the hour, but uh, for everybody watching, this has been um, the 300th episode. Mm. Uh, put together conversations. Uh, the conversation is most recent. Um, we we didn't have that at the beginning, but uh, we are <laughs> we've gone from just uh, being in, on all the audio networks to now streaming live on Facebook, on YouTube, and Twitter. So you can find us on all the three every Saturday. You can find us here at noon and five p.m. Pacific Standard Time. To uh, every once in a while, we throw in a special one, and today we had to do a special two o'clock episode. Because I wanted him, and the five o'clock was already booked. But I was like, "Wait a minute, we're coming to three hundred. Like, you've got to come on the show." Uh, I've been one hundred, two hundred. I can't be three hundred one. No, <laughs> that would be just rude. You'd have to like knock off people. I, I would be, I would be I was like, "I'm sorry, there wasn't enough time for you today. We're bringing it to you." But uh, honestly, uh, wholeheartedly, thank you so much for giving me a space for trusting me, for supporting um, all my craziness over the last nine years. Um, I I would not be the host and, and the social media person that I am today had it not been for, for you and Mr. Harston giving me that opportunity the first time. So I, I you know, I love you and I will, I will always yeah. appreciate you and hold it in the heart. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, like I've said too, I love you too. And I will take credit for your entire career. <laughs> oh, that's what you're about. <laughs> uh, for everybody, uh, remember before we leave, uh, we are here um, on Wednesday nights. We have the Christian and Daniel show. Uh, on Fridays, it's the Card Devo. Uh, on Saturdays, we have put together conversations. If you can't catch us live, you can always come back and watch them uh, on Facebook and YouTube. So go check us out. Um, all the other regular uh, audio places you can find your podcast. Go check us out. You can find the audio version there, but you can find us here live. Uh, we have separate guests, two different guests every week, so come check that out. Uh, I want to thank um, my director, Mr. Christian Paul Ramirez, who is also my boyfriend and partner. And uh, uh, he's feeling low under the weather today, but. Uh, I want you to know that without you, I would not have the freedom to do some of the crazy shit that I do and uh, take you on these nutty adventures that I go on. Uh, some things don't work and they've never aired and some things just happen to work and, and here we are. But uh, Christian Paul Ramirez, without you, uh, I, I would not function at the level that I do. So I really appreciate that. I want to thank uh, my manager, Mr. Jose Reyes at Hubris Management, who is also a huge supporter of everything I do. And he's also one of the most brutally honest people that, uh, that I work with. He will call me immediately after a show usually and say, what the fuck were you doing? And so <laughs> what, what, what was wrong with your life? You looked green um, because sometimes I don't do it right. And uh, to my talent agent, uh, Ms. Jennifer Sims at RPM Talent, thank you for having me on your roster and encouraging me and pushing me to do bigger and better things. I, I totally appreciate. And of course, to my uh, my guest today, uh, it's not only a guest, he's, a, he's my producer and he's one of my dearest, closest friends, Mr. Kevin Mortars. Thank you, sir. Uh, you, you're, you're Thanks for having friend. me. And uh, I, I'm, I'm blessed and grateful to have you as one of my closest friends. So I appreciate that. Same. So for everybody watching, I'm, I, yes, I, I'm about to burst right now. And I, <laughs> um, for everybody watching, uh, for you, for you, the audience, the people listening and or watching this, uh, thank you. 
Thank you for uh, being there. Uh, if, if I didn't know somebody was listening, I probably wouldn't do this, but you guys have stuck by me. Uh, more the, the person that sticks in my head the most is David Gonzalez, who has been following, put it together since one of the very first episodes that aired. And he has supported me and everything to do. So yes, David, I want to I want to call you out because you you will message me. You will encourage me. You um you you messaged me a lot when I wasn't doing well, and I appreciate that. Um, for all of the other audience, if I don't know you by name, I have you in my heart. Uh, you click, you watch, you listen, you comment, uh, you call me out when something's not right, and you cheer me on when things are are well and. Uh, I do this show because I want I want to help everybody put their lives together. Uh, this show has helped me enormously. So thank you. With that, I want to say uh, thank you again, Kevin, for being on the show. For thank anybody you. Out there, this is Daniel G. Garza, episode 300. Woo! <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys. Thank you. <laughs>